Are we live? It's so hard for me to tell. There's all these scrolling little circles on Facebook. Are we live? Are you guys out there? Hello, hello. Um, okay, I think we are now. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. It is July 24th, and today is day number 12 in my 30-day... Hey, Carolyn, how are you, honey? Um, so nice to be here. Boy, is it a beautiful day out there today. Um, so, today is Friday the 24th of July. My name is Crispina French. I am a creative textile recycling artist, entrepreneur, empowerment coach, environmental activist, and I love to bake cookies. Um, <laughs> seriously, I do, but I don't, um, I don't eat them, which is kind of funny. But I am here today to talk to you about potholder rugs and about, um, you know, the history of potholder rugs. What are potholder rugs and how you might get involved in um, the process because I got some super fun interactive ways coming right up. And um, I just want to mention again, we're going to be running this little special kind of um, a uh, fun way to connect more people to this feed by asking you guys to tag your friends. So tag your friends, pop me your mailing address and an email or a message right here on Facebook, and I will send you a little screen print that I made for you guys in the mail. And I actually have one right here. Hold on one second. Um, I think I do. I think I do. Well, they're all different. There's a bunch of them, but here's one. A little cool screen print. I'm thankful for you. Um, I have probably six of them. Um, anyway, hey, Sherry Rogoff Moraga. How are you, girl? How's Boulder? Um, boy, this is great. This is a great group. Thanks for tuning in today, you guys. So today we're talking potholder rugs. And potholder rugs are um, these really cool rugs. Sorry, just one second. That... Um, I make, and here's one that's um, a small kind of bath mat sized rug. And they are nice. Can you see how thick they are? They're beautiful, thick, kind of cushiony, really great with bare feet. Super nice when you step out of the shower. Um, and believe it or not, they're all made out of um, discarded clothing. So wool sweaters, sweatshirts, polar fleece, leggings, any kind of stretchy fabric can be used. And I've been making, the first potholder rug known to planet Earth was made in the year 1991. And I, it might have been 1990 actually. And I, I had, so I was running a production company at the time and I had 40 employees and I was buying tractor trailer loads of um, used clothing. And there was, uh, we would we would bring in these giant bales of used clothing and we'd sort them all. First we'd machine wash and dry them all. And then as they were coming out of the dryer, we'd sort them for end use. So the there was this kind of growing stack of material that was either torn or stained or just like, um, you know, damaged in a way that made it impossible for us to use in the products that we were currently producing. And that pile was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was feeling like, as the kind of die-hard recycler who might possibly need a 12-step program to throw things in the trash, um, <laughs> I was feeling like, okay, there's got to be something that I can do with these sweaters because um, it was, you know, I didn't want to throw them away. So I, um, you know, I was just looking at them and I kept, you know, I'd have to walk by this pile every day on my way to my desk at my, in my office. Or my, I, I had like this little... Um, it was like a, a little design studio within my production space. And um, every day I just look at it and be like, oh, what am I going to do with that stuff? Like, there's got to be something. And then one day I came in and I just had this idea. And I, I it was almost like, have you guys ever had this experience where you're kind of like on autopilot? Like, you're not really thinking. It's just like, it's like, I, I almost, I feel like I was channeling something. And my mom had given me a bunch of um, canvas stretchers that she wasn't using. She was a painter. And at that point, she had kind of decided against using really large stretchers. So she gave me 
a stack of um, canvas stretchers that she had. And I don't know, I was just like, sure, I'll use it for something, I'm not sure what. So I put together a square that was a 36 inch square um, with canvas stretchers. And I had these little super like bendy um, finishing nails and I tapped them, I measured uh, all the way around the edge and I tapped them in an inch apart all the way around the edge. And I started slicing up all these pieces of material that were sitting in this big pile and I made the first pop of the rug and it was a square and I thought well my idea was to make all these squares that I could then stitch together which I did I made six squares um, I stitched them together and that rug was in my office for many years then when my son was born in 1992 it became his nursery rug um, I still have that rug it's actually on the other side of this room I was going to show it to you but it's needs a good cleaning so it's um, a little gross but um, that rug be, it's opened up this world of amazing possibilities and I started making rugs for um, you know trade shows I was, I was selling my work at um, trade shows and I like I said I had a staff of 40 and I had um, three people who wove potholder rugs and I'm just gonna hold this up for anybody who's just joining us this is a potholder rug they wove these two three guys um, Jairo, Juan, and Edwin wove potholder rugs full time for, gosh, Juan worked for me for over 10 years. So we made rugs for room and board. We made rugs for um, ABC carpet and home. We made rugs for tons of beautiful little boutique stores all around the world that sold those rugs. So in 2008, I stopped running my production company and it was kind of like a really great time for me to reassess what I was doing. I was in the middle of writing my first teaching book and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start teaching workshops and just test out the, the lessons that I was coming up with for my book. Um, and I can tell you that my potholder rug retreats are one of the most, I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard to say. There's two retreats that I teach that kind of sell out every time. And one of them is my potholder rug workshop retreat. So it was about, gosh, it was just about a year ago. I decided, you know, I have a lot of people like you guys out there in the world. And I'm so thankful for all of you guys tuning in um, today. Um, I... Start, you know, people would ask me a lot, like, can you guys, can you offer classes online? And for the longest time, I just could not figure it out. I was like, I, I'm not, I, I'm a little bit of a technophobe. This was going back now. So about a year ago, actually, it's, it's been a little bit more like 18 months ago, I joined this business coaching group that is all about online teaching. And I mastered it. I can't say I mastered it. I delved into it and <laughs> my first online course was my potholder rug course so i am going to run that again this fall if anybody's interested you can hop on my email list over at crispina.com and um i'm just going to put that in um on the comments i can't speak and type at the same time i'm sorry hop on my email list at www dot crispina.com um that's the easiest way and then i'll be sending out some emails over the next couple of weeks so that you can um you know i one of the things that happens is that i do all these different product offerings and i i like to really specify who i'm sending emails to so i will send out an email if you'll you'll tell me yes i want to learn about potholder rugs and then i'll put you into the kind of email sequence for not getting signed up for that class so the the this rug was made on a loom I just want to kind of show you and actually the potholder rug course that I teach online teaches you how to make your loom um, right through to how to make every different it covers everything I have no secrets um, and I'm really I'm all about kind of like open source teaching so um, the loom one second sorry I turned my back on here for a second the loom that that rug was made on is here and this is, um, I sell these looms as well if you guys are people who would rather just purchase the, the tool. Um, I sell them in my shop. I also sell a loom 
kits, which is uh, you get everything that you need for the loom, but you have to put all those screws in yourself. Um, they're pre-drilled, so it's pretty straightforward. You just need to have like, um, you know, a driver of some kind. If it's a, I have like a Makita, you know, to drill, but you can use it for driving drill um, screws in as well. Um, and I make the looms in three different sizes. So this is the medium size um, rug from the medium size loom that I make. And it's um, about, um, I think it's about, it's one, so it's about 20, 18 by 24 inches, I think. That's not right. No, it's like, I can't, I, I'm sorry. If you um, hold on another second. Um, sorry, I don't have a tape measure close by, so I'm not going to make you wait too long, but, um, this is a great bath mat size and, um, I make them in a larger size. It's more like an entryway size. It's like 30 by 40 inches. And then I make them in a little size that makes this small square. And with this particular, these are great for chair pads. And that's initially why I made that rug. People kept asking me, can you make chair pads like that? And, um, Yes, you can totally make chair pads like that. Um, and the other thing you can do with the smaller components is you can make um, you can make larger sized rugs with the smaller square. So you can actually I teach this in, in the course. You can actually add these together, and you can make like a checkerboard rug and make it any size. Or you know, if it's an odd like an L shaped rug for a special place that might require that you can totally customize your um, sizing that way. So um, if you're interested in learning more about my pot holder rug course coming up, you can, um, like I said, hop on my email list and I see that um, there's a couple links to it over there in the comments. And um, does anybody have any questions about pot holder rugs? I can tell you, um, I can tell you that they wear really well. As I, as I said earlier, I have the very first potholder rug known to planet Earth, and I'm still using it, and it's uh, 30 years old. Crazy. Um, and then they also, you can make them out of any kind of stretchy material. So, um, like I said, you can have, you know, anything, any kind of thrift store material. Like, or you can use, actually, I have a woman who I've made a couple of custom, um, looms for over the years and she's a she's a fiber artist and she knits the loops and she had like she has um she makes art and i actually haven't seen her finished work but she knits the loops that you put on the loom and i cut them out of old t-shirts from the goodwill so my I, hers are much more labor intensive and more you know it's art to hang on the wall um so speaking of which art to hang on the wall um, I sold these rugs to a store in Brooklyn many years ago, and they had it hanging on their wall, kind of behind their cash register, and it was a really great sound buffer for them in the city where their store was really big and loud and high ceilings, and that really kind of like deafened the, um, the real kind of annoying loudness of their space down and they left it up there they sold it as a rug you know for the floor but they also were able to use it to display it in a manner that was um that enabled them to keep it nice and fresh and beautiful and not underfoot so um that is that's my gig about today is that you can really use like stains holes it really doesn't matter whatever kind of material you have um, the couple of samples that I have here are kind of random color placement. I have done, and I will I will do again, some beautiful kind of ombres that I've worked on, some rainbows. Um, you can make checkerboards with a small size rug. So if you hop on um, my website and go over to my shop, you'll see some of the pieces that are there that will show you um, the possibility of, I mean, the possibilities are actually endless. And... Um, while I have you here, maybe I'll just share a fun story with you about teaching my potholder rug course. Um, I've done a lot of work with different large volume textile recycling companies. I talked a little bit about that yesterday. And one of the companies I've done a lot of work with is Eileen Fisher. And she has an amazing program that kind of evolved from the work that we did together. Um, and it's her, her Renew collection kind of came from 
um, our work together, which is pretty awesome. So look up Eileen Fisher, look up her Renew collection. Um, but before you do that, let me tell you this fun story. So I worked with her design team for a couple of years and I would go down to their headquarters in Irvington, New York in Westchester County. And I would teach her design team different techniques. And I would also teach a public workshop while I was there so they could, you know, get some people interested, kind of just share, which they're really, I mean, the company, Eileen Fisher is an amazing, amazing company. So um, I had these public workshops that I would teach and I would often have 25 or 30 people in the room to learn. And I was scheduled to go down and teach a potholder rug workshop. And um, I had someone contact me about they wanted to bring their sister for her birthday, I think it was her 40th birthday, and she was Down syndrome. And she had um, made potholders for everybody in her family, all her caregivers, everybody she knew had little potholders that you might have made when you were a kid on a small little frame home. And her brother had found out about my workshop and thought that his sister would just like really love this idea. So I was like, absolutely, like this is, you know, totally inclusive. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to um, diversify our, you know, the class population. So he brought his sister and there were like, I think 30 people in the class that weekend. And, um, you know, everybody was lined up in this gorgeous workspace that they have at their headquarters down at Eileen Fisher. And I had, um, some kids with their teacher from a public school that got like a grant to come to the course. I had the brother and sister combo, and then I had all these other random people that were just individuals who came along for the class. And one of them was a kindergarten teacher. And, um, you know, I, I get everybody started. I give them a little sort of talk. I show them, I demonstrate, I get the loom, I show them this is how you do it. And then you, you know, there's cutting stations for people to cut their material and, so I, you know, kind of let them just kind of go. There's not, a, once the instruction has happened, then I just allow people to use the time to actually do the making and, you know, walk around, check in with everybody, make sure everybody's doing all right. And I had this kindergarten teacher and she could not understand the, the process of weaving, like under, over, under, over, under, over. It was just not, it was not making sense to her. It was completely unfamiliar to her. And, you know, I, I love to teach. I especially love to teach people who have, like, light bulb moments with me where they're like, oh, my gosh, I suddenly get it. So I worked with her and worked with her and worked with her. And finally, uh, you know, after, you know, I don't know, several hours, I was able to kind of, like, break through. And she understood, like, okay, if I went under this one on this row, I'm going to go over this one on the next row. And it kind of, like, yes, yeah, she had this epiphany. And she made a rug and it took her every single minute that we had and she finally got it finished and she was, I think I, think I actually helped her finish it because we were running out of time. So down, three or four people down the wall that they were, had their looms leaning against was this girl, this woman who had Down syndrome and she was the first person in the workshop to be finished. And she made this gorgeous, beautiful rug that had some kind of a pattern to it. I'm not remembering exactly what it looked like. Um, she really, her brother came with her, but he really didn't need to help her at all. She was completely independently working. And when she got finished with her rug, she got it off the womb and she like jumped up and down and she said, yes, yes, look at my rug, look at my rug. She was so excited. And you know, this was several hours before the kindergarten teacher, a few people down, had grasped the concept of the actual re structure of weaving. So there you have it. Like, you know, we often assume that um, people with an education or who educate or people who, you know, have different labels, have different capacities. And how often is that just not the case? So um, maybe just take that thought with you forward today and just know that you know, no matter what you think you might know about a person or you, no matter what someone might present to you as um something that is, uh, I don't know, you, you just never know. You just never know what, what skills someone has, what um, background someone has, what abilities people have. So um, potholder rugs are for everyone. Anyone can make a potholder rug um, as long as you have the use of your hands or um, maybe you have someone who can help you who has use of their hands. 
Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about while we're talking about pot hunter rugs, and I'm just going to show this again because I think we've got some new people joining us. This is a small pot holder rug. This is, a, it's actually about 17 inches square. Probably it's hard to tell in the camera, but um, they, you can make components the size and say you make like a whole bunch of ones that are generally like these colors, blues, greens, and a little orange thrown in. And you make a bunch more that are like these colors that are more like, oh, I call this color white oatmeal. So it's like rag wool sweaters, naturals, grays, kind of heathery sweatpant material, that kind of stuff. You could you could checkerboard these up. I mean that that would be quite uh, quite a room with a rug with those types of checkerboards. But you could do a more subtle checker too. You could make them all the same and just make a big rug that you, it's almost seamless when you put them together. You can barely even see how um, how to you know where they join when you make them all the same color. And um, if you're interested in doing my um, online uh, workshop, potholder rug workshop this fall. It's going to be um, in September and I'm looking forward to um, really just refining that the, my teaching process. I'm always looking for feedback. Speaking of which, if you have feedback about today's episode of my mini series live at 11 with Crispina talking all about creative textile recycling, pop me a comment and um, the other thing I was going to tell you about potholder rugs is um, I do something called a community potholder rug weave, which was initiated a few years ago by some friends of mine who were um, active with our local community garden. And in April, it was actually um, Earth Day when Earth Day was on a weekend a few years back. And Earth Day is April 22nd for those of you who don't know. They had like the grand opening of this new community garden down in Great Barrington, which is where I lived for many years and I still participate in community down there. Um, so they wanted me to come along and I said to them, they're both craftspeople and I was like, you guys, I love the whole premise of a community garden. I love gardening. I love community. I, nobody is going to buy a $300 blanket or a $500 rug for me at the community garden opening. So I would love to participate, but it doesn't really seem fruitful to me to, to lug all my product down there. And then, you know, people who are at the opening of the community garden, they want to plant seeds. They're not interested in necessarily purchasing things. So, but I didn't want to rule it out and I didn't want to not be there. So I, I just told them that that's where I was, where my head was. And my friend Alan, who is an amazing amazing craftsman he makes the most incredible tree houses like wow magical said to me well you know he's from alabama well you know you could um do a community clothing drive you know set up a clothing drive and then you could just have all that material to make your product and i thought that's a great idea i could do a community clothing drive and i could also use that clothing to create a rug on site so I brought down, I have a loom that makes a five by seven foot rug. So it's like eight by 10 feet or something. It's a really big rug, a really big loom. I brought down my really big rug loom. I set it up. I set out the community clothing drive box and I did a lot of promotion before I got there. And people came with big armloads of clothing they weren't using. And we made the most amazing rug ever. I mean, it, it was the first community pothole to rug drive. Um, weave that I'd ever conducted and it was just like it was so moving to me because there was all different kinds of people there was a lot of people who have plots at the community garden are lower income people that don't have any land where they live they live in an apartment or whatever and if anybody out there listening is familiar with Great Barrington you might know that it's a really hard place for people who are just you know working like in the service industry to live because there's just not a lot of real estate. So there was a lot of um, Spanish speakers, a lot of people from Central America who were gardening there. And it was just so beautiful to see this community building around that. And then there was, you know, people who were just interested in gardening and that had never tried it. They wanted to be part of a community garden that, you know, they could learn from other people. Um, and then there was a lot of people who were just visiting for the day that just happened upon this kind of little festival that was happening. So I have these beautiful pictures of 
people, um, you know, all participating in this amazing collaboration. And the rug was um, then sold, and the proceeds went to the um, to support the community gardens down in Great Barrington. So thanks so much for tuning in with me today. I hope that you all have a really great Friday, and I will be back tomorrow morning, live at 11. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.